gentlemen boys and girls welcome back after the final off week of the season we are ready to get the final five rounds of moto option supercross in 2024 revved up and ready to go tonight here in foxborough i am kellen brower going solo tonight unfortunately no co-host with me as uh, andrew wood actually has had a couple family members pass of late and uh, we send our deepest condolences to him and his family and hope that everything is okay uh, as they move past some of these grieving stages. And um, yeah, obviously a huge bummer to not have um, Awood with us this week, but we send our best wishes to him and his family and uh, yeah, hope that uh, they can get past this uh, tough situation for sure. But I am here and we are ready to cover round 13 of Moto Option Supercross from Foxborough. Triple crowns are now complete, so we're back into our normal format, but we're back East Coast racing this weekend. We have seen a lot of the West Coast guys the last few weeks or week two, three weeks, I guess, since we've seen the East Coast guys in Indianapolis. So uh, we'll get into that in just a minute. But before we do, we got to talk about qualifying and this fantastic racetrack that's laid out for us tonight, which has presented a little bit of longer lap times, which is something that we don't normally see in a football stadium. So let's jump into our lap times here on the screen. And Brayden Carter has gone fastest, at least so far. They just finished qualifying at this very second. Um, but Brayden Carter fastest at a 50.054. Luke Sullivan, 50.3. Enzo Boutigny at a 50.7. And Bryce Whale and Colby Eaglin mixing it up there as well. So usual suspects up front. Um, I think maybe the biggest one that I saw down a little bit further was Jacob Hubbard in 15th. Not really the start to his evening he was hoping for on the 78 ride, but Carter looking to continue to march towards the all-time Supercross wins record, which we believe he is now two behind Tyson Fresquez after his win last time out in St. Louis. Let's talk about 250 East, though. Like I said, we're back racing with these guys here tonight. Seth Carr fastest by a nose over Matt Cromie and Rasmus Balzer, and I mean a nose for hundreds of a second separate the top three positions right there. 51-9 for all three of them. Uh, but Seth Carr does get the nod by a little bit there over Chromie and Balzer. Austin Partolo, Garrett Hollenbeck inside of the top five. Few guys in the 52s. A lot of guys in the 53s. Got to go all the way to 23rd. Michael Mudge where we cut off at the 53 second range. So basically from Partolo to Mudge, there's only what 1.6 seconds separating 4th to 23rd. So really close times as well. Kind of fun to see that mix up a little bit. And we do still have full gates in the 250 class. I know the 450 class does not, but that usually is where we get to in the season. So Storylines to follow in the 450 class really is how early Braden Carter can clinch this title because he's 59 points up. We have five rounds to go. He has to be 75 points or more ahead with three rounds to go to clinch four rounds early, basically. So, And when we go next week to Nashville, there's a pretty good chance at least to some degree that it's possible for Carter to clinch there. Um, tonight, Will not happen mathematically. I don't think he can do so mathematically tonight, but definitely pulling that gap out. Fun little battle, though, for second in the championship because Eaglin has slowly worked his way back into a bit of a gap over Hubbard and Leclerc, while Hubbard and Leclerc are now fighting for that third position. But really, they're only 15 points uh, apart for the three of them. So battle for second, certainly a good one to watch. A couple other ones uh, as we go down, Castellaneta, Sullivan, Rogers, all these guys. Uh, getting mixed up as well. So we'll keep an eye on some of those fun battles. And then in the East, we have a really good title fight between Rasmus Balzer and Seth Carr here. Uh, they are now teammates as well. After the last time we saw these guys race, Balzer had switched over to the District Designs team. So Balzer and Carr now teammates fighting against each other to try to clinch this title. Balzer uh, is also trying to become the single record holder tonight of the all-time 250 Supercross wins. He's tied with Jeremy Smith, and Seth Shirley, all on 10 wins each for the all-time 250 Supercross wins record. And Balzer is hoping to break that tonight. So again, a couple storylines to follow coming into tonight. We'll uh, try our best to keep an eye on some of those things. But yeah, here's the racetrack that we're going to have here tonight. 
Um, very unique. Really, the first few sections, not nothing crazy to write home about, but pretty much from, let's say, the whoops onward, really, really interesting because you got the whoops into this uh, left-handed bowl corner up here at the top of the screen. It goes on off and then back across the start, wall jump, back across the start again into this weird sand section and then 90s back into this rhythm section here, which is actually setting up really interesting to see how many different lines there are um, going into this rhythm section. So I mean, you could jump over and maybe jump all the way over this and then 4-1. Uh, some guys will maybe consider going roll inside, step on over 4-1 or maybe uh, on off quad. A couple different options for sure. Um, but uh, we'll kind of see how this breaks down throughout the evening. I'll try to see if I can maybe get a lap in for you guys real quick. Looks like... Uh, Sorry about the ads rolling in there for a second, but UID grab is about to happen, so I'm probably not going to be able to roll a lap here right now. So we'll wait a second as we look over the track from this side of the track. And yes, Seth Shirley joining us in the chat room real quick. I did get your download, so I, I think it should be good. Honestly, I was scrambling a little bit tonight, so if I didn't get it in, I may have to back out and re-download or, or do something really quickly, but I think I should be good to go there. I'm also getting over a fairly lengthy cold. I was feeling much better like four days ago, so I'm like not even sick anymore, but you'll hear a little bit of nasaliness in my voice, um, and hopefully I don't lose my voice because I have been losing my voice. Like My voice is pretty much gone about four days ago, so hopefully that doesn't hinder me tonight. Uh, so here's the track. Jeremy Smith, my teammate, actually might take you for a little bit of a spin around this track. We'll take a look at the Heckman Productions SYS Racing number four machine as he's going to wheelie down the start straight. And um, yeah, JS4, he's pointed out of the 250 class, so he literally cannot defend at the moment his, uh, his honor of being the all-time 250 Supercross wins holder, which he is in a three-way tie with with Balzer and Seth Shirley. So at some point... Uh, Smith may not be the record holder anymore, but he held that for a damn long time. I think he took it over in the middle of 2014 in one of his... Uh, no, in the middle of 2013, I should say, because he won 2012 East, I think, and then 2013 West. Might have those coasts backwards, but in 2013, he became the all-time 250 Supercross wins holder and uh, has held it since. It's crazy. The, the names that have come through are uh, really good ones, too. Uh, Jeremy Seabolt got pretty close. Um, obviously, there's been bigger names that have come through as well. Hunter Root had some good, um, you know, 250 championships as well. But, uh, yeah, it's been a long time that Jeremy Smith has held that record, and Seth Shirley and Rastus Balzer are coming in to lay claim to it this season. <laughs> So JS4 showing us around the track a little bit. We'll uh, show you guys the track a little bit from my perspective. You may have already seen me try to put in a lap earlier today. Well, now JS4 is going to go around and show us a little bit of a lap. So let's uh, let's follow him around as he's going to go over table right here. And I'm going to come up a bit short right there. He was going 2-3. Paying too much attention to him. But I think most everyone's going to 3 in right here. And then 4 should be... Fairly doable for most 450s. I wonder if the 250 guys are getting that, though, to be honest with you. I'm not sure. <laughs> Didn't get a chance to pop in a quali server. <laughs> Stupid nasaliness is coming back right at the beginning of the stream. I don't like that one bit. Finish line jump. People are going to be stoked to see this inside rut because everybody's going to be taking it here tonight. And then back down across the starting line. Good opportunity for duallys on this triple because you get a, a decent little run up to it. You have to kind of scrub it as well um, to stay low. So some guys may toss some fatties for us. That'll be fun. <clears throat> but yeah, round 13. We're so deep in the season already. It feels like it was just yesterday that we were back at Anaheim 1 getting things started. And now we're all the way in Foxborough with only five rounds of this championship left to go. Comes at you quick. So while it does seem that our West and 450 title fights are just about wrapped up already with Seth Shirley dominating Braden Carter on his way to trying to claim a 450 uh, record. No one's ever won four consecutive Supercross championships in this game. No one's won three consecutive Supercross championships in this game. Tyson Fresquez has four. 
but he won them in consecutively. I think that's the word where he went uh, 2012, 2013, 2016, and 2017 for his titles. Braden Carter is trying to go from uh, 21 to 24. Claim some titles here. <laughs> By the way, quick shout out. I missed it at the beginning of the stream. Quick shout out to uh, Braden Carter. And it's not Jackson for the resubs. Uh, Carter for his 45th month of <laughs> resubscribing. And Jackson, three months in, subbing again. Appreciate you guys with the support. Always helps to have the subs uh, rolling in and and uh, pushing our page out a little bit more, getting a little bit of fresh face viewers in here. Because when we get later in the season, it's really down to just a, a core group of you guys that keep coming back every single week. And I appreciate the heck out of it. But we also like to keep those numbers up. All right. Let's get in and get ready to go racing for 250 East Heat number one here tonight. And if you're just joining us, uh, the Nick men in chat asking where Andrew Wood is here tonight. No, A. Wood, unfortunately, um, had uh, some family members pass away of late. And our thoughts and prayers are with him and his family. Difficult time for them, for sure. But we're all thinking about him. We're all thinking about them. And... Uh, Hope they can come together and get past the grieving stage. Always tough when you lose a loved one. So we're thinking about A. Wood and, and uh, we'll, we'll hope to have him back in the booth soon, but we certainly hope he spends the necessary time with the family. And Yeah, tough time for sure. All right, folks, let's go racing in Foxborough. 250 East action. Ready to get underway. A long couple weeks since we last raced all the way back at St. Louis. But now is as good of time as any to get back behind the gate and drop those gates and get racing once again. 30 card is sideways. Final five rounds of Supercross. Here we go. Racing again in Foxborough. Taking a look at Will now on the 824. It's going to be McIntosh on the 35 who gets to the corner first. A lot of guys pushed wide, including Alex Heckman on the 292. And it's Rogan McIntosh out in front. McIntosh jumping over to the Filski and Snowboard team. I was talking to team owner Braden Carter about this, and I said uh, it caught me off because he had, I forget who it was. It may have been Alec Horn running the Filski and Snowboard skins last round. And I kept saying the wrong team name or was not saying that he was associated with Phil's, but that's because they have so many 450 guys and not many 250 guys. So maybe this is Carter's way of jumping down into the 250 class and grabbing some faces. McIntosh leads us into the whoops on the first lap. Tricky set of whoops and McIntosh is going to go down with the lead. A couple guys going down behind him. A couple guys stacking up. Joey Carter getting in the mix right there. Antonio Velotti of Doofenshmirtz Evil Inc. on the 175 out front leading this thing. So I have not seen Antonio Velotti racing Moto Option Supercross before, but good to see another new face getting out front early here. And mixing it up, he's got Liam Atkinson of Digital Worldwide. We got a couple no skinners up here. And Velotti's going to lead a lap and he's pumped. A little bike hump in the air over the finish line jump. Gets that inside rut smooth. And off he goes. So how long will Velotti hold on to the race lead? Certainly looks comfortable. Nice little whip off the Supercross triple. Tripling in here and clean as well. And oh yeah, right up on top of those whoops. No problem. Up and over table, roll to the inside. Going to be interesting to see how that dynamic shapes up in the main events with some guys stepping on off to go to the outside. I think everybody's going to go inside, inside right here. It's a little bit... OP in those lines for sure. But Velotti, yeah, just hitting his marks right now. Over those tables, triple double into the corner, tripling out of this corner, not going for the big boy line, just triple, triple single, and going to lead another lap here. So Antonio Velotti, in what appears to be his first Moto Option Supercross race, leading here in heat number one in Foxborough and cruising now. Liam Atkinson still second. It's Alex Zellner who's moved up into the three spot on the 59 Underground RC Kawasaki. 
like those blue boots with the gear. Good, good look right there. So McIntosh picked it up from his crash. He's now fourth, just ahead of teammate Matt Cromey on the field ski and snowboard number 39 in P5. And Nick Casella on the fast lap. Suzuki, the 209 machine in six. We've got a rider going down. That is, who is that? Jonah Baquette out of a transfer spot back to 11th. <clears throat> Going to get passed as well by D Mills. Will now went by Michael Mudge, Austin Partolo, Carl Novak, a few names that went through. And then Casella. So where is our transfer battle right now? Looks like Will now has it. And he has some company. Michael Mudge. Quad single gonna land on him and they're both gonna go down. So who's coming in? It's D Mills beneficiary here taking over the final transfer spot. A little short there, but triple singles out, no problem. And another rider is down. Who is that? That is Carl Novak. Just picking it up on the 156. Verb Moto back by Underground RC. So that should move Jonah Baquette back into a transfer spot with Joey Carter. Hot on his heels, Dr. Dew racing. Oh, and he goes down, front end tuck on the berm. And several riders will funnel by. Tough break for Carter. He's been in a lot of main events of late. So Velotti out front still checking in. Two minutes left to go in this race, plus a lap. And the gap is uh, it's continuing to grow. It's now Zellner up in the two spots, so Atkinson has been passed. New positions have gone by as well, because McIntosh up in here as well. Atkinson drifts to fourth. Partolo fifth, Casella sixth, Cromie seventh, Mills eighth, and Jonah Baquette is in our final transfer spot, the 243. So Carl Novak's trying to close it back down. Let's go on board with the 156 ride, get an onboard perspective of this racetrack. Not going to get the Supercross triple right there. Slid out coming out of that berm. Is he going to lose a spot? Not quite. So I thought some of these 250 guys would like to do that, which is double-double, get a clean drive right into the whoops and not have to hit that roller beforehand. I don't think Novak did it on purpose, but he did just do that line. Good battle here, and Novak is right there on Will now who goes around him there on Jonah Paquette. Oh, and Novak almost goes over the bars. So now Jonah Paquette's dealing with the pressure from Will now on the Shutoku ride and he's getting out of shape. Good save. <coughs> over the finish line jump, we are down to the final 20 seconds and a lap left of this race. And it's nitty gritty time for this final transfer spot battle. Jonah Baquette. Oh, that's Mills down. And he is going to get passed on both sides. Will now goes by. And then gets stood up in the corner. Mills squares off their side by side. This is for ninth. Now shuts the door. Mills tries to pull up alongside on the wall jump. But now gets to the corner first. And Novak is still hanging out right there. Everyone electing to go inside on the exit of the sand. And look at this absolute freight train. Jonah Baquette will now in the transfer spot. D Mills in 10th, right behind these guys. Carl Novak is behind them. Will now is going to triple to the inside and move his way into eighth on Jonah Baquette. Puts Baquette back into the final spot. So McPherson and Joey Carter, Jack Gatlin, Gafford, they're all right there. This is not too far away from that spot. So this is going to get frantic here in a hurry. D Mills wants to get around Baquette. Baquette wants to repass Will now as Antonio Velotti is about to cross the line and win this race. And down goes Will. Now he takes Jonah Baquette with him. Mills comes to almost a dead stop to move into eighth. Novak goes by with him. Up front, Antonio Velotti makes his debut in Moto Option Supercross and wins 250 heat number one. Alex Zellner second, Partolo third, Cromie fourth, McIntosh Looks like he'll be fifth here. Atkinson right behind him in sixth will hold on. Casella seventh, Mills eighth, and Baquette is now ninth. So Will now is right there just in case. Joey Carter, Gatlin, look at this freight train of guys. If they can get to Jonah Baquette here. Baquette is sweating this thing, trying to triple in. He's going to jump off the track, and he's going to go down. 
In this other transfer spot battle, down goes Joey Carter. Will now goes to the main event. Gatlin misses out, as does Novak. Carter's going to pick himself off the floor. You got Fowler, McPherson, Gafford, Paquette, Young, Heckman, Fisher, Mudge also missing out. And that got close in the end. Will now sneaks in, getting around Jonah Paquette, who goes down. He was about to get teed up by Joey Carter, but Carter ends up slipping uh, on that last jump and going OTB. He'll end up 14th and on his way to the last chance qualifier. So Will now, Daniel Mills, Nick Casella, Liam Atkinson, Rogan McIntosh, Matt Cromie, Austin Partolo, Alex Zellner, and Antonio Velotti taking the dub here in 250 East, heat number one. So who is Merked? Is Merked actually Velotti? I'm trying to keep up with all these bikes names because now I have to deal with the crossover of no one uses their real name in bikes. <laughs> now they're all using their real names here. So Merked is Antonio Velotti. GG's to Merked. Who used to be kind of on my MX Bikes team a little bit. So have a bit of a rapport with him. Good to see he's out here crushing it. Dubs in the chat, though, for Antonio Velotti, a.k.a. Merked. Oh, and Chris Young is Casanova. Okay, man, whole bikes crew coming over to Sim. Love to see the crossover. We always talk about how cool it is to see Jeremy Seabolt going over, uh, being a Sim champion and racing bikes. And then we've seen, like, Braden Carter, Dennis Fjellberg, some other names like that, also making it over to bikes over the years, Zach Dupuy. Uh, but cool to see the crossover back this way with more of those bikes guys making some some noise here in Sim. It always kind of shocked me, to be fair, that all these guys that are pros in bikes were not around the Sim community before bikes. I don't, I didn't really understand that, but uh, now the crossover is happening. <laughs> Where's the mud? It's raining here. Well, to be fair, I think we might actually avoid mud this weekend. Uh, well, not avoid mud. We'll have mud, but avoid like a true rain race. It's supposed to rain Friday. They've already canceled press day. They're going to seal the track. And then Saturday, it might not rain as much. So hopefully, hopefully. We uh, will have a dry race. All right, so we got some familiar faces in here. Seth Carr and Rouse's Balls are highlighting this one as the two guys going for the championship in this class. There you go. THR Bob in the chat said they sealed the track yesterday. Good, good stuff. Honestly, like, full credit to Dirtworks this year. They've done a really good job of not letting these tracks get really, really out of hand when it's raining. Uh, there's only so much they can do, and they've done a pretty solid job of it. Here we go. 250 Heat 2 is underway. MX Simulator Foxborough Supercross into turn one. We went to Va uh, Maxime Vanderbeek, and he's going to lead into the first turn. Is he going to lead out of it? No, he's going to get put on the ground, and it's Balzer side-by-side -side with Justin Silvis of Dr. Do Racing out in front. So Balzer on the one goes to the race lead. And look at that. Triple quadding up. First guy we've seen on a 250 doing it, and he's going to lead over the finish line jump. On lap number one, Jet Wisdom, Bop Anthem up in P2. Good start for him. Jeff Cooper giving him the business into that corner right there. This is close action already. Doyle, Smith, Adams, Thomas Sunas, Branson, and Heinzelman. Looks like they are in our transfer spots early on. So Seth Carr has some work to do back here on the 15 machine. Just behind the 48 of Maxine Vanderbeek, who almost got that whole shot. And they're working on Tom Quineau on the 85 and the whoops. A lot of guys down, and Seth Carr is going to take a few of them down with them as they go through that corner. And Carr's already up into ninth, trying to pass into eighth, and he's got it. Oh, tight right there, almost coming together with Heinzelman. The boots house 708. Quad up for Seth Carr, trying to get around Heinzelman. Oh, and Heinzelman says, no, thank you, sir. 
What a save by Seth Carr. Not going down right there. I'm trying to switch to him, but he's like off the track. So there we go. He missed a timing gate or something. He's back in 18th. I wonder if this is going to reset now. Okay, yeah. So he's 17th. Got some work to do. Four points down in the championship and 17th place at the end of lap number two for Seth Carr. Rainbow Six Siege. Honestly, like, what's the what's the deal lately, man? Everyone's been playing Siege like it's nothing. Oh, duelies, trialies, quadsies even. Off the Supercross triple with Seth Carr bringing up Caboose into the whoops right now. So, oh, Seth Crotty getting sideways. He is down. It's going to be a position for Carr. And he is now ooh, into the back of another rider. He's up to 16th. Go back out front and see what's happening. I think balls are still up there. No, actually, just got past Alex Doyle into the race lead. So Alex Doyle out front on the 138, passing the 1E of Rasmus Balzer. Bit of a shakeup in the race lead now. And Balzer is going to try to go back to work. He's hopping and skipping through the whoops. Those things are nasty, man. So tall. Balls are into that wall jump, scrubbing it over. Tucks back to the inside here and into the sand. Gets a little bit sideways. So pushing, trying to make Alex Doyle work for it. And Doyle's just cruising out front. We saw this out of Antonio in heat number one. Doyle's just hitting his marks and not doing anything particularly wild. Like balls are quadding up into the corner behind him there. But uh, that might be the difference maker on this track tonight. There's a couple big options in these rhythms that could be tough to get consistently. And with so many twists and turns on this track, the track is also going to wear down a pretty decent bit in those main events. Could be something uh, where we see these guys taking the safe lines. Doyle hopping into the corner. And Balzer sensing an opportunity to close up. We got a lapped rider getting out of the way. That's a 284 machine. We got to remember to pull up live timing, but... Uh, that's JT George on Elite Decals getting out of the way. Oh, Doyle sideways. Got a little cross rutted back onto the start straight. Good save to not go down, but he will lose the race lead. And Balzer is now down as well. So Balzer, I guess, must have went for a big line to the outside line right there, and he is off the bike also. So he'll pick it up in second. Doyle still leads. Nikki T, Nick Thomas Sunis up in the three spot. With Trent Adams in fourth. Vanderbeek just picking it up off the track. He was in fifth. Logan Mortberg went by on the 181 Shutoku program into fifth place. So Vanderbeek now sixth. Jeff Cooper seventh. Tom Quino eighth. And Jet Wisdom now running in the nine spot. 403 machine. Triple out of this corner and try to get the flow into the whoops. Closing up is Garrett Hollenbeck, who I think is still top five in points. So it'll be a bummer for him if he misses out. He will not be stoked to miss out on this one. Trying to close that gap down. Pretty solid through this sand section. And again, everyone funneling to the inside. No one really going over. I mean, it doesn't really set you up for many better options except maybe step on off quad would be a little bit more feasible in that first rhythm. Well, Hollenbeck has closed the gap down and the battle for the final transfer spot is on Jet Wisdom on the 403 Bop Anthem program holding it down but Garrett Hollenbeck Takatoji 742 ride Trying to make it happen. Seth Carr is still outside looking in as Wisdom almost goes through the front door on the triple. Here's Hollenbeck in the whoops. Wisdom riding the rear tire to hold it. Oh, and still Hollenbeck gets into him and just gives him a little nudge out of the way. Oh, Jet Wisdom just gets right back by him. Step on, step off to the inside. Then they cross up. Somehow Hollenbeck does not get front end lock right there. And now he's going outside to outside. He's a little bit more fired up, carrying that speed through these corners. And this fight is on. Wisdom, a little short. Hollenbeck in a quad single. Wisdom's going to hold him to it, though. Oh, and then puts him on the ground. Break checks him. And Hollenbeck finally gets front end lock and goes down. 
Going to lose one, two positions is going by as Cody Branson as well. So that promotes Seth Carr into 10th. Next up for him would be to get Jet Wisdom. We are past time though. So next time by will be White Flag for the race leader as well as Seth Carr. He's looking at two laps to go and Wisdom goes down going into the whoops. Oh no, after all of that and the brake check on Hollenbeck, it's all for naught. As he lays it down, Branson goes down. So now Hollenbeck has to do the work to get to Seth Carr. They got a massive gap up to Jeff Cooper. Look at this freight train right here. Mortberg, Vanderbeek, Quino, Thomas Sunis, Adams, all the way up to P3, basically in the same section, third to eighth. And Balzer is just ahead of them. Alex Doyle is still crushing it out front right now. And all these fights in the mid pack certainly are ones of interest for transfer positions. But Seth Carr is just going to try to bring this thing home and make it into the main event. No going with that 2-2 option like I talked about. And gets up onto the whoops pretty comfortably. As the whoops break down too, they'll get a little bit easier because they'll flatten out. That's how it works with the erode system in MX Simulator. It gets just slightly easier and better. Here it is, folks. 250 Heat 2. Alex Doyle takes the win in Foxborough. Very solid effort out of the 138. Passing Rasmus Balzer and taking off. Balzer's going to get second. Looks like Tom Basunas will get third. Vanderbeek fourth. Look at this. Quino battling with uh, Mortberg and a lapped rider getting in the mix. So Quino sixth. Adam seventh. Seth Carr gets all the way to eighth. And Jeff Cooper, final transfer spot to the main event. He goes in ninth. Jet Wisdom misses out. Garrett Hollenbeck also going to be really annoyed with uh, with Jet Wisdom. Ryan Chousey, Max Wilczek, Justin Silvis, who is up front. Uh, Cody Branson, Jack Mark, Tyler Smith, JT George, Seth Crotty, and Brent Heinzelman headed to the last chance qualifier. And I'm curious if uh, Hollenbeck is already rage typing to Jet Wisdom for that incident between the two of them. Cuts are in. Looks like Quino got some cuts. Going to drop uh, behind Adams to seventh. And the 131 is Wilczek. He was the next rider to get penalties. 44 machine got two seconds to cut. Seth Crotty, you naughty dog, you. But it's Alex Doyle taking it home in 250 heat number two. And that'll complete our action for 250 heat racing. I'm going to whoosh that over there real quick and pull up live timing. And then we're going to go to 450 heat number one. All righty, folks. Coming up next, 450 heat number one. Jeremy Smith, Johnny Padani, Caleb Hall, Ethan Parks, Frank Jackson, Tanner Rogers, Adam Holm, Chase Blakely, Bryce Whelan, Aaron Rockefeller, Luke Sullivan, Brandon Larson, Alec Horn, Evan Holt, Race Cobble, Jeremy Siebold, Gary Laser Eyes, and Alexis LeClaire. I think we figured out Gary Laser Eyes is Walter Gebhardt, I think. <clears throat> but uh, I honestly forget. I don't remember. I remember who's who and who's using fake names in this game. All right, we get to see what the big dogs here in Foxborough can do around this racetrack. B 
be Lars Soli, Badani, Blakely Rogers, Gary Laser Eyes, JS Ford, switching it up. I don't, I don't, I'm not the guy that's like choosing the gear for my team every week, but for some reason, the gear that I use in the lap is the gear that they end up all using. So I don't, uh, this isn't my doing, but they just, they choose it anyway. I appreciate it. I just, I chose this specific gear for the lap this week because, I don't know, whatever, we're in Gillette Stadium, New England Patriots, you just got to run some patriotic kits, so why not? All right, here we go. For Fatty's time, I want to see what big lines we got. think that there's not going to be too much different than what we saw in the 250s, but maybe these guys are doing something in the first rhythm I wasn't even thinking about. About to find out. Bryce Whelan always a good starter on the 31 machine. Let's see how he fares here in heat number one. 450 heat one off and running in Foxborough. Drag race, a lot of Phil Ski and Snowboard KTMs up there. Rogers and Whelan get together. Got pushed out a little bit by the 27 of Horn, I think it is, but it's a Claire, another Phil Ski and Snowboard KTM, who comes out with the lead. He's got his teammates right behind him. Rogers going to go almost down into turn two. He's in the Davalos bales. It's put up high. So it's Leclerc into the lead. And Evan Holt now moves up into the two spot. Holtzy, B. Lars with a good start on the 76. Looks like Jeremy Siebelt did not make the call for this race. Did not go off the gate, I think. At least is not picking up on timing and scoring yet. As Evan Holt goes down at a second, brings B. Lars with him. We got a stack up. Padani goes high. Everyone able to get down below that little crash behind that. But 2-3-4 uh, in the race just put themselves at a big deficit. And moving up into that second spot now is Tanner Rogers. Leclerc, six seconds out front already. And let's see what Rogers has got. Outside, double across, and then, yeah, step on, step off, quad. Figured that would be the line those guys would go for, but somehow Jackson also quadded out. So what did he do? Went uh, on table to step on off quad, I guess. Very interesting how that uh, dynamic works, but we'll see what happens. A uh, shout out to Nolzy124 for subbing. Appreciate the support, man. Thank you so much. Hopefully you're sitting back and enjoying the show. Maybe you got a nice beverage. Bag of flaming Hot Cheetos will do as well. Gosh, the Claire is already gone out front, man. Putting the time in. So Rogers, Jackson, Horn, Holm. It's your top five. Caleb Hall is sixth. Padani seventh. JS4 is in eighth. And Holtzy rounds out the uh, top nine, I think it is, right? Yep. Still a ninth for Holtzy. He's got the 11 of Sullivan right behind him. And Sullivan's going to go middle rut to do this on-off quad option. Ah, but he's not going to get the quad kind of spun on landing right there. Oh, he's not going to get the 3-1 uh, right there even, so... Couple mistakes. Oh, and over the bars goes Chase Blakely. Man, we've been catching him at all the wrong times this year. And then crashing up the inside, getting taken out. Bryce Whelan goes into Aaron Rockefeller. Blakely crosses up in front of Rockefeller and almost takes him out. So then they stack up in the corner. This is all outside of a transfer spot. Just goes to show all the fun that these guys are constantly having back here. Here's P10, Luke Sullivan. And Sullivan's sixth in the points, I believe. With five rounds still to go, trying to make a little bit of headway late and move up a few more positions in the championship if possible. I think a lot of these guys in this range, like a Soli or a Hubbard, they really just want to win a dang race. Is going down is, is that Evan Holt? It is. Evan Holt on the 18 District Designs Honda has laid it down out of a transfer spot. He's gone back to 11. So Sully moves up into a transfer spot. Whoa, hey, oh, all right. We got a little hype train here. Felk Dubs gifting some subs. We got Hexitech and My Nips 454. What a name. 
What a name. Welcome to the uh, group. Thank you guys so much for the support. Uh, big shout out to Felk Dubs for the gifted subs, man. Just passing them around. I'd love to see it. Oh, Padani almost over the bars right there. So Leclerc still out front to the tune of about eight seconds over Rogers. Padani lays it down into the corner right there. He's going to fall all the way back behind Jeremy Smith. That's now eighth position, and Sullivan's closing up behind that. Sully just ran fast slap of the race, 51-5 in P9. So he's looking at a whole host of guys ahead of him as James Moore goes up the inside trying to pass Padani. Down into the whoops. Is that a district designs rider? It is, but it's not for a transfer spot. Caleb Hall and James Moore side by side. James Moore stacks him up. Good fight here into the wall jump. Man, there's a lot of guys... Really close together here. Outside options again. Caleb Hall is going to step on, step off, and quad by Jeremy Smith. Not quite. And then Sully pulls up right behind him. Man, nose to tail for these three riders right here. Oh, Jeremy Smith up the front of Caleb Hall almost gets into him. Mike's not on. My daughter's standing here talking into a microphone that's not on. <laughs> it's a family affair here. Get into the closing stages of this. Let's see. You want to? You want to talk to the people, Holly? Yeah. What do you want to say? Wow! 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 Motorcycle. Uh. Darn right, motorcycles indeed. Good call out there by my daughter. Sounds like them going through the whoops. Speaking of going through the whoops, here is Alexis Leclerc. Two laps to go for the 2018 champ, and he has cruised this heat race, man. 10 second lead on Tanner Rogers. Yeah, no problems right there for the seven. So what is he doing? He is going over table quad, I'm guessing, but just messed it up right there. And then either triple dub or quad single into the corner. And then this one, yeah, three, four. Man, OJ's it a little too much oomph there. Claire's always had a pretty springy setup on the seven. So white flag is out. Going to lap Jeremy Sievolt there, who is 254 seconds behind everyone. Five laps down. Tanner Rogers, Johnny Padani, Frank Jackson, Caleb Hall in the top five. Luke Sullivan, sixth, almost going down. Alec Horn, seventh. Adam Holm, eighth. Uh, here's Holtzy versus JS4 for the transfer spot. 18 versus four. Both of them going to quad up. Smith lays low behind him, though, and white flag in the air for this battle for ninth. Laying it into the corner. Holtzy. Trying to hold off one of the best to ever do it and make it into this main event. Holtzy hopping the whoops. Oh my goodness. Really good job of crowling it together as up front, Alexis Leclerc takes 450 heat number one and right back to this transfer spot battle. Man, I thought Smith would get it a little bit closer, but Holtzy's just inched away. That's a mistake right there though. And Smith is gonna be able to carry speed through this corner. Now, what is he gonna do in this first rhythm? They both go over. And then Smith is going to quad up to the inside, makes the pass. They just both got around Caleb Hall, and that was for position, so they don't need to pass each other, and Holtzy realizes it. Oh, Hall got close, but Holt goes to the main with JS4. Hall just misses out after that crash. Race Cobble, Chase Blakely, Ethan Parks, Brandon Larson, Aaron Rockefeller, Gary Laser Eyes, Bryce Whelan, and Jeremy Seabolt go to the LCQ. Whew, that got tight right there. Leclerc, easy dub, 15.7 seconds. Penalties, let's see if it affected anything. Looks like Adam Holm got Alec Horn on cuts for sixth. And the transfer spot stayed the same, so all is well there. I'll chase home this man right here. Alexis Leclerc, number seven, Picardi France. Five-time national champion in MX Simulator.
right, 450 heat number two coming up next. What's going on in the chat? Love the love the hype train that you guys give my daughter when she comes on. By the way, that we always go back and watch how it sounds on the stream afterwards. It's like my wife's favorite part of the night. I swear. Um, and we just love to see what you guys say about her chatting on the stream. It's gonna come take my job sooner or later. When uh, MX Simulator's still going in about twelve years. Sorry, bro. Just trying to show off all sides to Alexis Leclerc. There's a point in time, long time ago now, to be fair. I think 2015, 2016, which is really weird to say that's eight or nine years ago. But there was a time when I was streaming and I would have people DMing me saying, Bro, what the hell, man? Cameras are too far away. We don't see all the cool graphics on the bikes. Like We don't get to see all the sponsors and stuff. And I'm like, all right, man. I got you. So after the race, I would always do a shot close up of the bikes, give love to the sponsors and stuff like that. Eventually went to this just like spinning around the bike thing that I do, but that's why I do it. No, Tucker, I will not be a Foxborough. I will be at literally every single race that is not Foxborough. I live, that is the farthest away race of the year for me is Foxborough from where I live. Um, so it's a bit, it's a bit pricey. A little bit. But uh, we'll definitely be in Nashville, Philly, and Denver and Salt Lake. Gosh, it's so weird to think there's only four more that, that uh, go into for Supercross this year. Obviously, I'll be at Nationals and stuff too, but <clears throat> I did go to St. Louis. <laughs> Just did a 30 minute moto on Foxborough. We're going to be dialed. On Saturday. Yep, absolutely. There's one way to get ready for the real race. It's play MX Simulator. Pros have said it. Not just me. All right, Joey Rico with the OG throwback no fear kit for Sparco. I like it. I like it a lot, actually. Mixing it up with that showy. Okay, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to warrant. A warrant in Massachusetts. All right. So you're seeing the names scrolling across the top, the bottom of the screen, I should say. I don't know if I need to repeat them because we're about to talk about them. It's 450 Heat 2 coming up. Hey, nut. 134, thank you for the sub. Appreciate that, man. So nice of you. Our final heat race of the night, people. I still have heat one on the screen. That's my bad. Look, now it's heat two. Our final heat race of the night. See if Jacob Hubbard rips another holy. We're off and running. The 78 got a pretty good jump. I think he's going to lead us into turn number one, and he will. Oh, huge crash. Few guys got collected up the inside. I saw T-Lang disappear into a scrum of people. And it's going to be Hubbard ripping the whole shot here in 450 heat number two. It's got Jack Haley, 2019 Moto Option Supercross champ right behind him. And uh, just was talking, I think, to Carter, Brayden Carter, a couple weeks ago and said that Jack Haley finally was going to have some skins. Nope, we still don't have Jack Haley's skins. So Jack Haley's been racing all year. We still don't got his skins. It is what it is. Got Colby Eaglin breathing down his neck on the 24, and then Braden Carter just behind that. Oh, Haley! Nice save, and Hubbard is way off the track. <laughs> Where was he going? Homie just fifth tapped off the berm and handed over the race lead to Colby Eaglin. So Eaglin now from Haley with Carter up to third. Caden Speck fourth, Hubbard fifth. As they're all chasing the 24 District Designs ride. Let's see if Jack Haley's line works out better here. Quadding out. I honestly like that better. I don't know if it's faster. But it just feels better. That clean quad out. Oh, Haley with the yard sale. Cases it and he's toast. Let's see. We got Dooley's over the finish. Oh, Dooley's. It's an 
Now it's Eaglin v. Carter up front. Like Hubbard going inside right there, taking the short way around the track. Yeah, sir, I'm, uh, I actually followed up with that today because I'm trying to figure out what information out of you they need. In the past, uh, it would just be email and I think address or something like that, but I'll, uh, I'll touch base with you. I, it's something I need to, uh, get dialed in, but was taking the off week quite literally, to be honest with you. <clears throat> So Hubbard and Carter training a little bit together to try to close up on Eaglin, who just absolutely tosses in a heater. 51-7 out front. And then Carter one up some 51-6 right behind that. 51-7 out of Hubbard. All right. We got a little quality lap war going on out front. I like it. Let's see what you're doing. Only three riders in the 51s. Everyone 53 or higher. And it's our three leaders right here. Transfer spot battle right now between T Lang and Braden Tharp. We'll get back to that one in just a minute, but I want to see if these guys keep the quali laps rolling. Corner speed is unreal that these guys have. Oh, Carter, mistake. Not going to be the option that he was hoping to do right here. Double, triple, single. Eaglin goes 52 flat. Carter goes 52 one. And Hubbard goes 52 three. Okay, all right. We see you guys. Okay, inspect 52 nine. Pretty saucy. Castellaneta, what do you got for us? Sunshine 53 three. Man, consistency is the key. 54 flat. Butegni just. What just happened with he and Enrico? They just crossed over each other on the finish line jump. Oh, Boutigny lays it over heavy, and I thought he was short in the triple. He was not. All right, so our transfer spot battle. Here's Lang. He's in ninth. Oh, Tharp. Almost over the bars right there. No, Brayden Tharp can lay down a lap or two to get up in the mix. So let's stick with the 23 Covenant ride here for a second. Is there been a more one-line section than this right here? I really hope it doesn't look like this this weekend like they can do something inside rollers i don't know what but it seriously funnels inside to inside right there so well it's tough to say that it would be any different irl but we'll see butigny went down i moves tharp up to ninth d davis outside looking in he's trying to make his way up here and d davis just had one of his uh, best results of the year i think at st louis two weeks ago sixth place overall i believe it was so shout out D Davis. OG. I think he's still one of the highest UIDs out here. Or highest, I mean lowest UIDs. And a UID is a user identification number that you get when you purchase the game. And it basically goes in order of when you purchased it. As Carter jumps off the track right there. Uh, the first like. I think it was like first 300 or so were more or less randomly assigned because it's people that already own the game. So person with the lowest UID is Josh Vanderhoof, game creator. He's number one UID. Number two is August Sanders, uh, which has always been fun folklore. But then like Daniel Mills, who's racing here tonight, is like 21 his UID is or something like that. And then D Davis is somewhere in the uh, low fours, 42 something, I think. Maybe high threes. back on the track right there. Blake O'Brien just in front of Colby Eaglin, who's still working a little bit of an eight second lead out front. He went 51-3 last time by. And just cruising at this point. Hubbard's moved around his teammate. Where is Carter gone? All the way back to fifth. Carter has had a little bit of a tendency this year. And uh, just saying this, he's going to yell at me later, I'm sure. But it's had a bit of a tendency to turn one mistake into like 12 as one crash and then it'll snowball a little bit, gets frustrated. And I'm not saying that's what happened here, but he did go from second to fifth really quickly. Oh, Castellaneta stood it up in the corner and Carter's down again. Now that was not Carter's fault necessarily. He could have checked up a little bit better. But that's what I'm saying, man. Like he went from really close to the leaders to 20 one seconds off of them in a hurry. And 
as the white flag is out for Colby Eagland, number 24, district design Honda. And transfer spot battle not really cooking right now, which is why I'm not back there. Joey Rico, ah, it's starting to cook. Let's go back. Boutigny's tightening it up on the 46. It's Rico right here on the 82 who is in the final transfer spot. Oh boy, went for the quad and cased it. That's going to cost him some time. All right, one lap to go in this transfer spot battle. We saw what happened in 450 Heat 1. Guys were all close together and it just blew up on the final lap. So can Boutigny get there? Inside before the Supercross triple again. I have a feeling these 450 guys are going to work that rut in in the main event as Colby Eaglin takes the heat race win. 450 Heat 2 goes to the number 24. Boutigny quads up and it is on. Arico versus Boutigny for P9. Oh, Arico missed the rut. Boutigny got it, but Arico uh, gets the inside here. Now Boutigny is going to square it off and go to the inside. Let's see. Arico is going to go step on, step off. Does he get the quad? He does go for it, and he just gets it. That's probably going to do it. Unless he doesn't get this. He does not quad here. Boutigny doesn't either. Trying to get close, but he's not going to get there. Arico to the main event over Boutigny. D. Davis. Evan Vanderkoy. Spencer Turley quadding up. He's going to the LCQ. Hayden Stevenson. Tyler Nichols, Timmy Briscoe, Anthony Pachone, and Blake O'Brien along with Ryan Burke will be headed to the LCQs as well. So is this win number two on the season tonight for Colby Eaglin? Potentially so. Looked really solid right there. That was... A clean heat race, too. Only three-tenths of a second of cuts out of Devin Davis. This is the only person that had penalties. Interesting. All right, who's ready, people? LCQ time, best time of the night. And so far, I feel like this track has at the very least kept guys close in these battles uh, for the transfer spot. We haven't seen massive disparagement between P9 and P10 and really spread out gaps or anything like that. So I think that sets us up well for a good LCQ here. All right, a little quick disco Rico, and back we go. All right. Whoa, all right. I guess we're going already. Gave me like four seconds to reload right there. I don't know who's running the show tonight, but they got a tight ship. We're moving along. We're getting this LCQ started before the hour. I think this is it. LCQ time ready to go here 
In Foxborough, 250 LCQ. Well, I don't know. That was a lot of people down if this is a true LCQ, but it seems pretty legit. So Ryan Chousey will call it as is. Gets the whole shot in this 250 LCQ. A lot of guys going down. We got Quad City. And Justin Silvis moves into the spot. I don't know. No, it's a lineup check. Okay. I thought so. Thought this was a little much. Oh, no wonder it took me so long to load in. Track was on St. Louis. Thanks, Imoto. I'm just out here yelling about a lineup check. <laughs> Caleb Hall and T Lang, who are probably in the same Discord as each other, just modding each other in the chat right now. Good stuff. I'll tell you, I don't think my life got any better than when I stopped chatting in MX Simulator chat. That was, uh, that was brutal. It's been a long time since I like really competitively raced in this game and people who raced me back then certainly did not like me. Well, that's fair though. I was kind of an idiot. Okay, now it's time for the LCQ. Top four go to the main event. Five minutes plus a lap. Pretty solid names in here, honestly. McPherson, Wilczek, Carter. Joey Carter, that is. Jack Gatlin, Jonah Paquette was in a good spot. Garrett Hollenbeck, he's going to really want to make amends right here. So here we go. LCQ time in Foxborough 250 class. Let's get it. Gate is down. Land rush into that first turn. Oh, it's close. Some bumping and banging. Joey Carter gets shoved out and goes down. Hollenbeck's going to get to cross the line first, but it's going to be JT George in the lead. He goes down. And I think we're going to see a little bit of this in this 250 LCQ. So Jack Gatlin goes to the lead. The TM Factory Racing Rider is actually number 29, but running his number 11 skins, which I think is for EU. He's got Harrison Gafford, Justin Silvis, and Garrett Hollenbeck in transfer spots behind him. Oh, number one in your hearts. Thank you so much for the Risa. Appreciate you, brother. Oh, my goodness. Swap city for Harrison Gafford. Side by side with Hollenbeck. And Hollenbeck is just going to stand it up in the corner and not get taken down. They cross up again right there. And this is a little bit too close for comfort right here. McPherson getting into the battle on the 69 as we're side by side in the first rhythm lane. Oh, Hollenbeck mistake is going to try to triple into the corner and not get passed up. 417 of Justin Silvis. Here comes tripling in right behind these guys. Ryan Chousey. He's trying to go to the final transfer spot. Hollenbeck is just desperate to hold on to this thing. He's going to have to go wide here and Chousey might get the spot. Oh, Chelsea slides out. And Hollenbeck gets it back for the time being. Husky City right here. We got one EVP, a couple Takatoji Huskies. Hollenbeck down the inside of his teammate to get back into third, and he'll get it and into fourth. Making that pass was Chelsea. Gatlin back on the track from being off. It's going to slide back into fourth place. And this freight train is nuts right now. Harrison Gafford takes over the race lead. Hollenbeck right behind him in second. Sliding out nearly in third is Chousey. And Hollenbeck's trying to go to the lead. Gafford cuts over and almost goes down in front of him. Hollenbeck to the front. Gafford gets going still in second, but Chousey's trying to triple by him and will do so. Uh, Gafford might get him back. No, settles in behind him. And then Gatlin, like we said, <clears throat> bringing it home in fourth at the moment. So Jet Wisdom, he's back up in the mix. McPherson a little bit off of these guys now. JT, George, Michael Mudge. Uh, tough break for Carl Novak. He's 17th for all you Carl Novak fans at home. Joey Carter, Dr. Dew racing down in 14th. Oh no, Chousey was down with Gatland. And Chousey goes down again. He got hit by McPherson, I think. So Gafford now takes over the lead. Hollenbeck second, Wisdom third, and Gatlin slips back to fourth. 
with McPherson trying to close the gap down in P5. So it's not over yet if you're maybe in the top 10 still because these guys are really playing musical positions up here. And it just takes a few of them getting together for the tides to turn in a hurry. Oh, like that. McPherson through the front door. Not going to get any closer to Gatlin with that. In and out of the berm, up and over the Supercross triple. And into the whoops we go. Gatlin tapping him through. Oh, that's uh, Hollenbeck down with Gafford. Wisdom to the lead. Gatlin to second. Hollenbeck is going to pick it up in third, but going to get passed by McPherson. Now Hollenbeck's on the bubble. He passes him right back. Teammates. So now Gafford, who was leading this thing, is all the way back to fifth. He's behind McPherson. McPherson on the 69. It's the white bike right here on your screen. And the KTM of Gafford, the 240. They go two, three, uh, two through this rhythm section. Finish line jump to inside rut. Man, ripped it pretty good. Really keeping McPherson honest in this fight as we're going to be down to no time on the clock here in about 15 seconds and Gafford goes down. And now Chousey goes by McPherson. So McPherson was down at the end of the whoops and Chousey goes into a transfer spot. JT George goes by into fifth and now Chousey is on the bubble, but he has a five second advantage to deal with. So white flag is going to wave for Jet Wisdom out front. Lap traffic trying to get out of the way. I think that's Alex Heckman, perhaps. Heckman gets in behind Wisdom and tucks the front end and goes down immediately. Not sure what that was about. Gatlin and Hollenbeck relatively safe right now so it's up to Chelsea to not throw this thing away he's still got a five second advantage on JT George jumps off the track right there got to get through the whoops clean these guys have been bugging out in the whoops and Chelsea gets hit from behind he's gonna get completely stopped right there it's McPherson now who's gotten around JT George but he's still about five seconds behind him So up front, Jet Wisdom, the 403 Bop Anthem Machine is going to bring it home and win the last chance qualifier. Garrett Hollenbeck goes to the main in second, third for Jack Gatlin. And Ryan Chousey is going to finish up in fourth. So McPherson ends up in fifth, sixth for Tyler Smith, seventh for Harrison Gafford. 8th JT George, ninth for Chris Young. And Justin Silvis down in 10th. Novak, Mudge, Fisher, Carter, Baquette, Mark, Branson, Heckman, Wilczek, Fowler, Heinzelman. All missing out on this one. A report from Evan Holt in chat is Garrett Hollenbeck, 5th wide in Harrison Gafford for first, and that's what caused Gafford to transfer. <coughs>
All right. One more LCQ to go. It's the 450 LCQ coming up next. So what is going to happen in this one? Blake O'Brien, Caleb Hall, Ethan Parks, uh, Timmy Briscoe, Anthony Pachon, Chase Blakely, Evan Vanderkoy, Aaron Rockefeller, Brandon Larson, Tyler Nichols, Devin Davis, Hayden Stevenson, Spencer Turley, Race Cobble, Ryan Burke, Gary Laser Eyes, Jeremy Siebold, and a whole host of other guys that I did not get the chance to name because the timing and scoring turned on me at the end. All righty, people. One more last chance qualifier, and then it's on to the main events. I feel like we're moving through tonight pretty fast. Uh, not way, way faster than usual, but we're going to be main event racing here in about 10 minutes' time. And uh, it's pretty fast, I feel like. No? Might sneak this thing under a two hour show. All right, final LCQ of the night, and then it'll be time to drop the gates on the main events here in Foxborough. What is Race Cobble doing? Jesus moly. <laughs> Dude, he hit that first rhythm section. Absolute tip tap rude. Yard sales his way through. All right, top four to the main event. Everybody else heading home. That's why they call it the last chance in which you can qualify. Because after that, it's bye-bye. Jeremy Siebold's going to try to get a good start, but he's got an awful gate pick way outside. And waiting on 57 of Pachon. Looks like Jeremy Gwizdowski says his game crashed. Normally speaking, they do not do anything about that. That's a uh, considered a mechanical DNF. Let's see. I don't think... Are they going to do anything? Are they going to red flag it? Nope. It's 450 LCQ. So, yeah. That's what happens. Mechanical DNS, I should say, for Pachon. Not a DNF, but here we go. Off and running in the LCQ of the 450 class. Oh, b -Lars got stood up and it took a couple people with him. I think Rockefeller was another one that went down. Bryce Whelan quads up. Oh, Blakely had a good start and it lost almost all of it. E. Davis there right with him on the 37. Down goes Evan Vanderkoy. Uh, D. Davis down as well with the 46 of Boutigny. All right, so let's set it up here. Whelan, Stevenson, Turley, Cobble, the top four. Blakely up into fifth. Is it a red flag? Are they red? They are red flagging it. Interesting. I'm guessing, I'm guessing maybe, I'm guessing maybe they would red flag it based on the fact that his game crashed on the warm up lap and they restarted it prematurely. Maybe that's what they're saying. Cause uh, yeah, that was a rule. I think it started back when I was hosting Race Factory, which is like 12 years ago now. 
but they would if your game crashed on the restart like that's the point of a lineup check is to make sure everything is solid with you if your game crashed on a restart it's sim it's essentially your game crashing on the race at that point so they made it impossible for restarts to happen but looks like they uh they let it go and we're off and running again. 450 LCQ restart. This time, B-Lar is going to get to the corner and not go down. He's going to push a little bit wide on the 76. And Turley gets the whole shot. Hayden Stevenson's right there with him. b -Lars goes down anyway. And Turley quad cities into the race lead. Rockefeller, who was also down early. Better start this time. But he's going to get a little bit swapped back on the track and take down the 91. And these guys looking like goons out here early in this one. <coughs> So it is Turley from Seabolt, Hall, Nichols, Gary Lazeri, Vanderkoy, stack up right here. Parks down with Rockefeller. Blake O'Brien also in the mix and then stacking up behind that. Boutigny just went down, I think it was. So these guys have a lot of work left to do. And Jeremy Seabolt in a pretty good position. I think he was down off the start of the first one. Maybe got collected in that, in that melee that was causing uh, b -Lars got stood up going into turn one. Five second lead though for Spencer Turley. Just putting it down right now on the 125 machine. He's got that 2013 Kawasaki dialed. Has not touched those decals since he literally put them in space back in 2013. He's cruising right now, 54 1. A little short on that. Lean through the whoops. And see, we'll quadding up. <clears throat> so Caleb Hall is in third. Gary Laser Eyes is fourth. And here comes Ethan Parks on the 38 trying to close that gap down. In and out of those inside ruts. Oh, Parks into the back of him. Down he goes, brings Rockefeller and the 91 of Briscoe with him. Fast lap of the race up front. Spencer Turley, 53-6. Man's cooking as Tyler Nichols goes down. Parks gets slaughtered by Chase Blakely and goes down again. More and more guys going down. Vanderkoy, he's going to flip in here. Nichols gets hit again. And a lot of people back here are going to be slightly pissed off, I think. That the races are not going better. Update from Chad is Seabold is apparently playing in third person and ripping. Uh, we'll break that news at 11 p.m. here. But 55-6. 54-8 his best. Step on, step off quad. Got that pretty clean. Early up front putting 53 ones down. Another new fast lap of the race. And 52-3 for Seabolt. So Turley going about... Well, actually, Seabolt, I should say, went faster that time by. Top four are very spread out right now, though. So seems unlikely things are going to change. We'll stick on board with Seabolt and see... If he's able to continue putting this lap together. So 53-1 and 53-9 again out of Turley up front. We're down to the final minute and a lap of this race as Turley laps Tyler Nichols there on the 73 Spink Yamaha. And Nichols is putting some heat on the 125 and now quads up behind him. Interesting how close that is. I, I would have thought the quad would be much faster, but it worked out pretty evenly. Oh, Nichols wanted to pass Turley, but jammed on the brakes and 
elected not to as Turley's still trying to go for the quad line and gets it right there. Ethan Parks going a lap down. Turley is going to get to the flag just before time expires. We've got about eight seconds left on the clock. So still two to go. And uh, it's still Gary Laser Eyes, Caleb Hall in the top four. Eight second gap behind them to Timmy Briscoe. This is a very spread out race. Much different than we saw in the 250 LCQ. Dude, Tyler Nichols is making Spencer Turley work for the race lead and he's not even on the same lap as him. Turley still goes for the quad. Dang, I don't know how that pulled out. 52-7. Seabolt pretty much settling for second at this point. There's Caleb Hall. There's Gary Laser Eyes. Credit to Timmy Briscoe and Blake O'Brien who are still laying in uh, some of their personal best, but unless some of these guys crash up here, it's not going to happen. Actually, Gary Laser Eyes was down just as I say that. So hold on. We got a transfer spot battle. Timmy Briscoe is in it and Blake O'Brien wants it. Oh, here we go, folks. Buckle up. Dooley's over the triple, too. Into the whoops we go. Briscoe and O'Brien both very clean through that. And Briscoe quads, which O'Brien does not. Turley takes the win in the LCQ. Uh-oh, Briscoe, a mistake in front end tucking down. O'Brien is going to get the spot. Barring a disaster for him. So he goes over this table. Going to go quad single. Oh, a little short, but he's okay. So Seabold goes to the main. Caleb Hall joins him. And Blake O'Brien goes through in P4. Last rider to go to the main events tonight here in Foxborough. Timmy Briscoe is going to be so bummed with himself as he just misses out in P5. Hayden Stevens in 6th. Aaron Rockefeller in 7th. Bilar's 8th. Gary Laser Eyes 9th. Evan Vandercoy, Enzo Butigny, Anthony Pachon, Devin Davis, Tyler Nichols, Chase Blakely, Ethan Parks, Bryce Whelan, Race Cobble, Ryan Burke. All headed home early tonight. And in the LCQ here in the 450 class, they all chased home this man, Spencer Turley. Of the Spencer Turley team, number 125, gets the dub in the 450 last chance qualifier.
All right, sorry, just trying to save my voice just a little bit before these main events because I know we're about to get Riley, people. 250 main event coming up here in Foxborough. Seth Carr, Rouse's balls are four points between them. And uh, obviously crucial for the championship, but uh, historic potentially. If Balzer picks up another win for his 11th career win here tonight, it'd break a tie with him and Seth Shirley and Jeremy Smith for the all time lead in 250 Supercross wins. All time list looks like this right now Jeremy Smith, Rasmus Balzer, Seth Shirley, all on 10. 250 Supercross wins in their career. Jeremy Siebold has nine. Connor Linz, eight. Rush Chapman, eight. Isaiah Dickerson, eight. Colby Eagland, eight. Pretty much everybody except Balzer and Shirley are pointed out of the 250 class at this point on that list. So it's really up to them to decide. All right, 250 main event time. Seth Carr, Maxime Vanderbeek, Antonio Velotti, Alex Doyle, Jet Wisdom, Tom Quinno, Liam Atkinson, Ryan Chousey, Austin Parlow, Rogan McIntosh, Trent Adams, Alex Zellner, Nick Thomasunas, Nick Casella, Jack Gatlin, Logan Mortberg, Will Now, Garrett Hollenbeck, Rasmus Balzer, Jeff Cooper, and Daniel Mills going to the line. Let's pick ourselves a Design Lab Co. whole shot winner going into the 250 main event here tonight. I am going to go with this man right here, the 35 of Rogan McIntosh. Phil Ski and Snowboard will pick him for the Design Lab Cole hole shot. See if he gets it. Nothing on the line but brownie points, my friends. But it is back in action for the 250 East boys. It was a little bit of a hiatus, a three-week break from the last time we saw them in Indianapolis. But they have been waiting. Oh, how they have been waiting for this moment here in Foxborough to drop the gates again and bring this season home in a great battle. Here we go. 250 made from Foxborough. Will now on the 824 has got a great start from the outside. It's tight up the inside. A few guys come together. Tom Quino, the Design Lab Co. Whole shot winner on the 85 DW KTM. Quads through the first rhythm. And pulls out a nice little lead. Seth Carr's got a good start. Austin Partolo also a solid start up here. So these guys on the R6 program. So that's not District Designs anymore, is it? This is a different program for Seth Carr. They have moved on from that team by the looks of it. And his teammate, Partolo, coming with them off the front. So it looks like balls are 18th place at the end of lap number one for the 1E. And he has got a lot of work to do as down goes Quino with the race lead and up front goes Seth Carr. So now it's the two teammates. First week running of the R6 program. Oh, and Seth Carr hits the inside tough block and goes down. What a super unfortunate crash for the championship contender on the number 15. He's going to go around the outside and get going in seventh. 75 of Atkinson got sideways in front of him. That's going to move him up to sixth. As Balzer is still just 18th. So things are trending in a good direction, even with that crash for Seth Carr. As at the end of lap number two, Austin Pardolo, number 52, Rainbow Six Siege ride out front. McIntosh second, Gatlin third, Hollenbeck fourth is wheeling through the end of the whoops. Goes Austin Partolo. That was a close one, wheeling those last few right there. Now he knows too, he just saw his teammate crash out of the lead by hitting his uh, shoulder slash head area on those inside tough blocks. Kind of the first time we've really seen it all night, but if you're Partolo, I almost think you go into those corners every lap with a little bit of a wider entry. Just make sure of it, right? <clears throat> don't put yourself in a situation you don't want to be in. As he has now led two laps in a row here. 
2.2 second lead over Rogan McIntosh. Then you got Gatlin Hollenbeck, and here comes Seth Carr up into fifth, closing up on the Takatoji ride ahead of him. So R6, is that just Takatoji? I mean, it's seriously, it looks like it. Going to go by, uh, Hollenbeck is going to go by the 29 there of Jack Gatland. I guess they're slightly different. Maybe? Golly, man. Those bikes look almost identical. O'Neill gear, showy helmets, Alpine Star boots. Same cutout, different logos. Okay. Very confusing. It'd be great as if you guys would stop running identical skins. Especially replica skins. That really is just like, do something different. 54 flat, part of low out front. Fastest lap of the race once again, 2.9 second lead. And it looks like Carr and Hollenbeck are really the battle to watch for this third position. Balls are still 14th here on lap number five. So uh, unless a miracle happens, I don't think win number 11 is happening tonight. And then we get to see an East-West showdown at Nashville to potentially determine all-time 250 winners with Seth Carr and Balzer. Hollenbeck really making Seth Carr work for it. And down was McIntosh in transition right there. So McIntosh going to go from second back to about sixth. It's going in fifth, actually, just ahead of Liam Atkinson. But Hollenbeck is not letting Seth Carr by in any facet here. He's making this quite a race for second place. 53-1 for Partolo out front. Now 5.8 second lead for the number 52 ride. Over table inside for Seth Carr. Love those two lines because they work out so evenly, but it gives you at least the option with that inside line to uh, force the outside guy to really hit his marks because if he doesn't you can stick a nose there and try to make that pass stick but also you could slide out easier by going to that inside line the outside line is a safe line for sure as our leader Partolo was down oh really tough spot to go down as well must have just got the rhythm section all wrong and gonna lose the race lead because of it so Garrett Hollenbeck your new leader on lap number seven, is Seth Carr still pushing the envelope right behind him? Balzer is up to 11th. He's 20 seconds behind this battle for the lead as Hollenbeck comes up short and into the back of him goes Seth Carr. Through goes Partolo. Here comes McIntosh. Let's see if McIntosh will go through as well. Yes, he will. So Carr picks it up in fourth place. Oh, Hollenbeck just got hung up. Or no, Partolo, I should say, got hung up on that inside rut right there. And Hollenbeck... A little bit of breathing room now. 4.2 seconds. So it's Garrett Hollenbeck now out front ahead of Austin Partolo, Rogan McIntosh, and then Seth Carr coming through in fourth. Liam Atkinson fifth ahead of Jack Gatlin, Tom Quino, Maxime Vanderbeek, Alex Zellner, Nick Casella, and here is Rasmus Balzer, our championship leader in 11th. Trying to quad by Casella into the top 10, and he'll get that pass done. He is moving, and he's making good progress through the field. He's going to quad by into ninth right there, going around Alex Zellner. He is about 11 seconds behind Seth Carr, but he is five positions behind him. So right now, as it runs, Seth Carr would take over the championship lead by a single point, I think. But Balzer just moved into eighth as down was Tom Quino. And honestly, we're not even halfway. Balzer is making some ridiculously good progress through the field. I would not be surprised to see and maybe even land on the box with this effort right now. He's going to need to not crash for a few laps, though, because he's got a train of guys behind him still. that quad still getting a little bit closer and moves up to seventh because of it atkinson was down just before the finish on the 75 so balls are up into seventh now here's seth carr in fourth trying to close the gap down on mcintosh and the leaders are starting to tighten up a little bit again 
Hollenbeck, Partolo, McIntosh, Carr. This will be a good fight for the win as Gatlin was down and Balzer is now into fifth. This is a pretty remarkable ride thus far. He was 18th on the opening lap. He's now fifth here on lap number 10. Or lap nine, I should say. And he also just ran fastest lap of the race at a 53 flat, which just got reset by this man, Seth Carr, who's moved up into third, a 52-7. Partolo goes from second to fourth with a crash, and Balzer's now going to be able to see him going the other way on the start straight right there. So battle for second about to start heating up. Seth Carr versus Rogan McIntosh, and these positions become ever more crucial for Seth Carr because the more guys he can put between him and Balzer, the more points he's going to gain overall. These are two and three point gaps. If he can win the thing, it's a three point gap to second. And then uh, two point gaps between second and third. So Carr's just trying to get it close. 3.1 second lead for Garrett Hollenbeck. Halfway through this race, a little bit past halfway now actually. And it doesn't look like 3.1 seconds anymore. It is not 1.8 seconds is the gap for our leader to Rogan McIntosh and Seth Carr can see it all in front of him now. Lap traffic in the way. One of these riders in the way uh, might be is that Trent Adams on the 63. Seth Carr, really odd mistake right there. And he's got to hit the whoops. Yeah, it's going to lose him a bit of time. Like Partolo just went down, and Balzer is up into fourth. 15 seconds off the lead, 11 seconds off of Seth Carr. It stayed pretty similar with he and Seth Carr, and it's really the lead battles that are changing, which Garrett Hollenbeck was just down with a group of lapped riders, and he coughs up the race lead. Here comes Seth Carr trying to move into second place. They're going to go side by side. Hollenbeck a little bit short, and Carr up into P2 with that pass. Our new leader is Rogan McIntosh on the 35 Phil Ski and Snowboard Machine as he's got about a four-second advantage. But at this point, I do not think you can count Rasmus Balzer out of this race. As crazy as that sounds, five minutes plus a lap to go. He's 13 seconds off the lead, but he's come from so far back to get to this position. Wouldn't that be something if he can get up here and mix it up for the podium positions all eyes now on rogan mcintosh as he tries to hit his marks and keep seth carr behind him for these final five minutes credit to hollenbeck too settling down and sticking right there in third not letting things get too far out of hand just yet so 54-1 mcintosh 54 flat for Seth Carr. And Balzer comes in with a, let's see, he's crossing the line right now. 54 8. So actually a little bit slower than these guys. 13 seconds off the race lead. And Seth Carr is starting to move that train just a little bit. <clears throat> Trying to close the gap down and win this main event. See how deep these ruts have gotten. The sand super deep on the inside right there. Triple, triple, pretty solidly right there. And that gap's come down significantly. 52-8, 54-2. So gained about a second and a half last time by on McIntosh out front. It's down to 2.4, now two flat. And you can see McIntosh just up the road now ahead of Seth Carr. Coming up on three minutes of this race left to go. Balls are just reset. Fastest lap of the race in fourth place at a 52-7. He's 12 seconds off the lead now. Oh, my goodness. This is going to be wild. Buckle up, folks, because the battle for the win and where this championship will sit after this one is about to be nutty. As here comes Seth Carr on Rogan McIntosh for the race lead. Oh, a little bit long right there. Lap traffic is going to come into play. Seth Carr triples. He triples again. Inside for McIntosh to defend. We'll keep the lead for him, though. And 
Now Carr goes to the outside, trying to square up that corner. That run on the inside is so deep. Not able to do it just yet. Over the Supercross triple. Balls are now 10 seconds back. McIntosh a little bit short into the whoops. Seth Carr for the race lead is going to try to make it happen. And he's got him. And he slides out and goes down. But he's still on the bike. He is still on the bike as Hollenbeck slid out in the background. And suddenly Balzer's in the picture. Here comes the 1E machine. Oh my goodness. Carr had just made the pass. But I think it was a little bit of residual front end lock. And Carr's down in the sand. Unbelievable turn of events. Went from trying to pass into the lead, which would have been for the championship lead, to behind Balzer again in fifth place. Balzer has crawled all the way into third. And he's right behind Hollenbeck for second. This is why you just never count out our defending champion, man. He has made this thing happen. Tripling in. They're eight seconds off the lead still. Balls are swapping a little bit. They're going to need some help for McIntosh out front. And McIntosh is just not giving it to him. Hitting his marks and being consistent. But some of these ruts, man, are also getting really deep. Is that car down again? That's Pardolo. So car just moves up into fourth. And he can see balls are up ahead of him, so it's not out of the woods just yet for Balzer. Having to deal with Seth Carr. Boy, this feels like it's a battle for the win, but it's not as McIntosh is putting it down out front and quadding to the inside for second goes Rasmus Balzer. Wow, what a move. 54-5. That was a whole second faster than McIntosh. But uh, time will expire this time by, so white flag coming out next time through. Balls are a little bit short on that triple in. 8.7 seconds. And, uh, oh, it looks like Carr went down again because Pardolo went back by him. And Carr has really thrown this thing away. This was a golden opportunity to gain points in this championship. And Balzer, even if he settles for second, is still going to pick up more championship points. It might not be a record-breaking night. But we'll knock on wood because there's still one lap to go for this man. Rogan McIntosh. Filski and snowboard number 35. Little scrub off the Supercross triple right there. You see him cutting down early, trying to avoid getting into that rut. So he can still triple in cleanly. He is through the whoops clean. 7.8 seconds back is Balzer. McIntosh really could just about double his way home here. He does not need to mix it up with these lapped riders. Doesn't need to do anything crazy. So I'm curious how he takes these last few corners as he wheelies through the sand section right there. Let's see what he does. Going to go over. Uh, he's going to triple double still right here. But I'd imagine he's going to double in right here. No sense in tripling in. Yeah. Checking up. Double. Double again. Going to triple into the corner. Here it is, folks. Your Foxborough winner tonight, Rogan McIntosh, gets it done in the 250 main event. Rasmus Balzer picks up second. And Austin Partolo gets all the way back to a podium spot. He'll be third, just ahead of Seth Carr. And Garrett Hollenbeck from the LCQ ends up in the fifth position. Maxime Vanderbeek looks like he's going to get six. Jeff Cooper, seventh. Liam Atkinson here in eighth. Will now ninth. And Daniel Mills going to round out the top ten. Casella comes home 11th. Chelsea in 12th. Gatlin, 13th. Adams, 14th. Doyle, our heat winner, ends up in 15th. Zellner. Chromi Velotti, our, our first heat winner. Jet Wisdom, Mortberg, Thomas Sunis, and Quino was the makeup of the order there. Any changes up front to talk about? No. Rogan McIntosh, Moto Options Supercross winner in 2024, picks up the win tonight in 
Foxborough and has a chance. Bilski and Snowboard does, I should say, to make it a sweep. I don't think any team has swept this year. Uh, no, actually, I think Balzer and Eagland both won Arlington, I think. Could have that wrong, could have that backwards. But Balzer wasn't on the team yet at that point, was he? Have we had a team sweep yet this year? Don't know if we have. Somebody hit me in chat, iMoto probably on it already. But yeah, shout out to Macintosh, man. Got it done. And he looks pumped, as he should. It is so hard to win these damn races. And you gotta celebrate them when they come about. Might look like second nature to some of the top guys. But uh, kudos, Rogan Macintosh gets it done. Uh, the question was, have we had a team sweep this year? Phil's is... Uh, on par for it potentially tonight. A lot of guys in the 450 class could get it done to match what Rogan McIntosh just got done. But I was trying to remember, I know Balzer and Eaglin, I think won the same night, but I'm not sure if Balzer was on the team yet. And then I don't has a Phil's 250 rider won this year? I don't think they have. So trying to just trying to rack my brain really. All right, folks, 450 main event coming up here in Foxborough. If you haven't fastened your seatbelts already, I would recommend doing it. I'm, I'm not even talking about your desk. Go open your car and lock the seatbelts in place because something needs to be held together for how gnarly this main event's about to be. Seems like it's been a walk away with Carter. I know he's won a lot of races this year, but somehow every week these races are always good. So who gets the dub tonight? Alexis LeClair, Evan Holt, Jacob Hubbard, Frank Jackson, Jeremy Smith, Spencer Turley, Colby Eaglin, Joey Arico, Alec Horn, Jack Haley, Luke Sullivan, Caden Speck, Johnny Padani, Braden Castellaneta, Braden Carter, Blake O'Brien, Braden Tharp, Adam Holm, Jeremy Siebold, Caleb Hall, Tyler Lang, and Tanner Rogers make up your 22 rider field going 20 minutes plus a lap here in Foxborough. All right. Update in chat is no sweeps yet, at least as far as iMoto can tell. So, might be on for one tonight. Let's pick ourselves a, the Design Lab Co. whole shot winner. And when I'm just in the, uh, the studio by myself, I just have to. I'm sorry. I just have to pick this man right here, Jacob Hubbard. Modern day whole shot king. God, does he want a race win bad, though. Really bad. See if he can convert on one here tonight. Alexis LeClaire looked really good in his heat race. Trying to make it another win here tonight. Can't count out the fact that LeClaire is also pretty well up there in career Supercross wins. I don't know how far. Uh, was trying to figure out all these stats of, of late, but uh, we used to have... Uh, who is that? Um, Alex Kerr or something like that doing all the stats. And it's been a minute since uh, we've seen him updated. Yeah, I think that inside line, man, those guys are going to work it in. It's not going to be good early, but look out for that inside before the Supercross triple to turn into the main line halfway through this main event. I think all these 450 guys want it to. Cuts off the corner quite a bit, and if you can dig out a deep enough rut, it's basically just like hitting the outside berm anyway. So we'll see what happens. Jacob Hubbard, we're picking him for the Design Lab Co. whole shot. Head over to the designlabco.com. Check out all the cool stuff they got over there. But uh, it is time, folks, for round 13 of Moto Options Supercross live here on Start Your Systems TV. 
Who is going to pick up the win here tonight in Foxborough? Who is going to walk home a Moto Ops and Supercross winner from round 13? Here we go. Couple guys coming together. It is going to be Hubbard and Holm to the corner first. Hubbard's tucking in tight. Smith to the outside. Jacob Hubbard picks up the Design Lab Co. Whole Shot Award here in Foxborough. He's out in front. He's got his teammate Braden Carter with him. Jeremy Smith with a good start on the four is up in the three spot. Right there, mixing it up with Tharp. Colby Eaglin's got a good start in fifth. Sully sixth. Haley seventh. Evan Holt right there in eighth. Alec Horn. Caden Speck also up in the top ten. And Alexis Leclerc is down in turn one. He's 21st. So they're all chasing Jacob Hubbard on lap number one with Carter right in tow. So for these guys, it is crucial to not let the number one machine pass them early. Obviously, he's already up in second, but if you can get up there, if you're Jeremy Smith, for example, get up there, ruffle those feathers a little bit. Oh, Hubbard, a little bit tight. On the tough blocks right there. Front end tuck a slight bit. Oh, change up alliance for Carter. Let's see if this works. Hubbard actually checks up and goes on off quad anyway. And Jeremy Smith jumps into the picture with the 4-1 option. Oh, and Carter doesn't get the quad. Jeremy Smith up the inside into second place. And here comes Eaglin on the 24. That is who... Look at that, Carter to the inside and still pops the triple relatively easily. I think that 24 machine is who Carter really doesn't want to see. Maybe that or the 7 behind him, but uh, Leclerc still down bad in 21st. Oh, mistake. Eaglin stacks up after the whoops, and he's got to let a few guys go here. Not to get taken out, coming back down off the berm. So he's going to get going in ninth, I think. Yeah, ninth just behind. Ooh, and a mistake there. Alec Horn, a few guys getting stacked up. Caden Speck. Change for second place as looks like Carter just went back by Smith. Smith is trying to get it back from him, but will not do so. So Carter back into second place. And this time, triple quad with ease. So now he's going to set sail after his teammate, Hubbard, who is on to lap number four in the race lead here. Carter ran the fastest lap at a 52-3 last time by. Hubbard into the tough blocks. Carter down the inside. Into the race lead. He goes on the one. It was a slight error there for Jacob Hubbard. But it was big enough for Carter to take full advantage. As the number one machine moves into the race lead. So is it goodbye time? Or do these guys have something to say about it? I think it's crucial for Eaglin to stay close right there. And now these guys are going to go double. With the on-off quad through here. Carter short. Almost could have been bad. Just making small little mistakes as Hubbard launches into the berm right there. Henry Smith still holding down a solid third and passing into fourth. Luke Sullivan on Braden Tharp. This is a tight little battle. Oh, Carter was down with the lead. Carter went down on that inside rut and now he's swarmed and he's going to get pushed wide by Jack Haley and he's side by side with Colby Eaglin suddenly. Wow. So just as Carter got in the lead and looked to start taking off, it's Hubbard back to the front by three seconds, and Carter's surrounded by other riders as he almost gets into Jack Haley right there. Now, we talked about it earlier tonight. Things have a way of snowballing for Carter a little bit this year. Whether his own mistakes or problems with others can't let this little bobble early on affect him that much, but it might. Let's see if he passes Haley with the quad. Haley went down. Oh, and Eaglin gets into him and goes down as well. That is a tough break for the 24. As Carter moves into fourth, he's now right behind Tharp. As it's Hubbard, Jeremy Smith, Tharp, Carter, Speck, Sullivan, Eaglin, Lang, Turley, and Haley rounds out the top 10 now. Up the inside into third goes Carter on Tharp, who OJ'd the triple. Now Carter lands in the tough blocks like Hubbard did but able to crowd together and still hold on to third place. So next up for him is Jeremy Smith. Oh, Carter! How did he not fall off the bike and almost gets teed up right there by Luke Sullivan. Brayden Tharp got caught up in a bit of a swap right there. That was really weird, that sequence. And now Tharp getting tossed around a little bit back there. So now 
Carter dealing with Sully in a battle for third. As up front, Hubbard resets fastest lap of the race onto lap six as Sully goes over the bars into the Davalos Bales. That's going to be a bad spot. Let's see if he gets stuck. Oh, he just pulls it out of the top there. Oh, bad track re-entry. Not good right there. Blake O'Brien going to be real upset with that. And is that Holtzy on Eaglin? Wow, Eaglin dropped all the way back to ninth. All right, let's reset it because we're on lap six here. And Jacob Hubbard is leading this thing. Six and a half seconds out front of Jeremy Smith. Getting the quad still. Yep, got it. Out of this corner, triple. Reese and then quad. Yep, nicely done. So Hubbard at this point really got to start trying to put it in cruise control a little bit. Not jump off the pace that he's running right now, but settle into this pace to a degree and not have to push it to this level because Carter just laid in fast slap of the race at a 51-3 behind him. But Hubbard is doing 51-7s in the lead. Not going for the quad there anymore. Lap traffic is almost certainly going to come into play here, I feel like. They're going to hit lappers real quick. I mean, we're six minutes in. You can already hear the rumble of them up ahead of Jacob Hubbard here. Step on, step off. Not going to quad this time, so we'll lose a little bit of time, but I like that. Hubbard's Achilles heel so far this year, at least visually, is that he still goes through the big lines when he doesn't need to. And right there was a bit of a sign of playing it smart. Battle for second is a Bruin, though, because here comes the one on the number four. Ooh, Carter slid it into that corner a little bit. Surprised that inside line for the triple hasn't developed yet because that outside line is going away very quickly. Spencer Turley update for you fans. He's up to sixth ahead of Colby Eagland. Oh, Carter. Swap City. Oh, man. Hubbard's about to hit with so much lap traffic as this battle for second still is materializing. Hubbard around Tanner Rogers, his teammate. Next up will be Jeremy Seabolt. And then Joey Rico, Luke Sullivan. Sullivan's night has gone from really good to really bad in a hurry. And Carter's up to second. Got Jeremy Smith. Lickety split. 52-2 last time by. Not the fastest rider on the track. That was Braden Tharp at a 52-1 in P4. So Hubbard is uh, now it looks like he's got Tanner Rogers playing blocker here. I don't know if that's really what's happening, but Rogers is not going to let any lappers come up and spoil the party for the 78. You see that rut getting a little bit worse in the sand too. So the option not as feasible, it seems like. Oh, Rogers down hard. <clears throat> oh, that's not a good line for Carter. Wow. Really, really good. Kind of just come up short and turn left, not get caught up in that other melee going on over there. So Hubbard, Carter, Smith is our top three. Caden Speck just got around Brayden Tharp as we come to him. So this is a good battle for fourth. Eaglin is about four seconds behind these guys. Oh, Speck misses the rut and Tharp gets it right back, but it's not over. Speck inside into this corner, blocks it off and gave him a lot of room, but still gets the pass done. Oh, that's a weird triple in. What a save. And right up on top. Easy peasy through there. Did he try to quad? I don't know. But that did not work. And through goes Tharp back into fourth. Here comes Eagland. Like I said, he was inching up on these guys. And he is suddenly there. 51-2. Ran his personal best last time by. And I feel like Eagland's going to be kicking himself. And he threw this one away early because he was right there with those guys. And look at this. Now Speck gets back around Tharp. Tharp triples in. And here comes Eaglin trying to quad between them both. Gets in the middle of both of them. Now Eaglin trying to go to the inside in this corner. Not quite getting there. Look at how deep these ruts are getting. You can see even Speck is like, I'm good, man. We're just going to stay out of this one.
Into the whoops we go. Carter is now five seconds behind Hubbard. Ran the best lap of the race at a 50.9 last time by, but I think he's made a couple mistakes because it had gone down to four. It's now out to six, actually. So we keep watching this Eaglin Tharp battle. Tharp actually pulling back away from Eaglin. And what I like about what Tharp's doing is he's kind of doing everything no one else is. He's taking lines that the uh, top guys aren't, and he's kind of staying out all the chop and the roughness. It's probably helping his case a little bit here. Meanwhile, Eaglin. Still kind of hitting all the main lines and throwing caution to the wind back here. Johnny Padani's moved up to a solid sixth place. He's right in here. And then Spencer Turley over the finish line, jump behind him. Having a great ride from his LCQ win. Now right on him. Carter went down. Update from second to third goes Brayden Carter as Jeremy Smith retakes second place. And we are now past halfway with Jacob Hubbard still leading this race. Electing not even a triple in right there, so safe lines are coming out for the 78 machine. Back to the battle for second again, and here comes Carter on the four of Jeremy Smith. Smith has just been hanging out here, man. Waiting for these guys to make mistakes, and every time Carter makes one, Smith goes back by him. Now Carter's going to try this inside before the Supercross triple, but he has to seat bounce the ever loving Jesus out of it and comes up short so through the whoops they go Carter quadding to the outside and then that battle oh Tharp just pirouetted and landed it but Eaglin does go by him just wanted to switch that for a second Smith a mistake Carter sensing an opportunity to pounce and is going to double across and take the preferred option right here. Smith is going to get right next to him. But uh, Carter is going to jump right back by into second place. And the chase is on once again out front. Hubbard is still leading this thing. 51-9 last time by. He is actually still cooking out here. 10 second advantage. 52-1 out of Carter. They were about two tenths of a uh, second between each other in lap time. That last time by. And under eight minutes to go, plus a lap. Look at how gnarly this track is getting, though. This is from uh, Hubbard's perspective here. Still electing to go to that rut there, which actually hasn't gotten as bad as I thought. And then step on, step off, get in transition. Oh, no! He's over the bars! Trampolined over the bars. Fortunately for him, Carter is not coming. Here comes Jeremy Smith as Hubbard picks it back up, still in the race lead. All right, settle down, settle down, settle down, Jacob Hubbard. Jeremy Smith is going to be looking at a three-second deficit. Carter had tossed it away again. He crashed somewhere else. So Hubbard has to take some deep breaths here. Because I think he's a little bit riled up from that crash. But he's still in the race lead and actually in a pretty good position here still because he's running more competitive lap times than Jeremy Smith and he gets plowed into by the 27 of Alec Horn and goes down. You've got to be kidding me with that. Oh, no. So here comes Carter as Jeremy Smith has taken over the race lead in Foxborough. I'm going to have to dig real deep to try to remember the last time Jeremy Smith won a main event. I'm thinking 2018 is the battle for second between the teammates is on. And Hubbard's not going to get the quad as Carter goes by him. And Hubbard's worst nightmare is coming through. Wait a minute. Colby Eaglin is knocking on the door of opportunity, folks. He's here only five seconds off the lead. These guys are only three seconds off of Smith out front. And this track is getting gnarly. The farthest we've seen a race go is coming upon us. We're just about to crest the 15 minute mark of this race is Carter's just trying to hit all the big lines. Smith just tucked the front here because these ruts are so deep. Oh my gosh, Carter would a save. And Smith goes down in the lead. The four machine is off the bike. Oh, Carter. He almost had a little bit of a trampoline moment and Hubbard quads up behind him. Eaglin is still sitting right there and Carter blows it. He goes through that entire rhythm section like a whoop section and Hubbard's back in the race lead, but Eaglin is right there behind these guys. 
What a race this is in Foxborough with five minutes and a lap to go. Don't forget, Brayden Tharp is still four seconds behind these, and Smith is only six seconds off the lead after his crash. Hubbard down from the lead and brings Carter with him. Colby Eaglin takes over the lead in Foxborough. It's just continuous chaos. As Eaglin now leads this main, Carter's settling in behind him in second. Tharp is now to third, and I think I just saw Eaglin make a bit of a bobble right there. He's not taking the line that these guys were taking, and here comes Carter quadding up behind him in a battle for the lead. Quad up to the outside, squares it back off, side by side with finish, Dooley's for the race lead. And Eaglin holds it on to the inside. Four minutes and a lap left to go. Oh my goodness, what is about to happen in this main event? Can Eaglin win this thing for his second win of the season and spoil the field ski and snowboard party? Little slide out right there, and there goes Carter back into the lead. Eaglin's just going to get right on his tail, though. You know he wants this one bad. Tharp, JS4, they're still sitting back there in case these guys get together. Different of options right there. Carter's still going for the big line, and this is going to get a little bit hairy. As he still got it. And then Carter nails the triple quad, so that's going to get a bit of an advantage now. 1.62. Back to Eaglin. Here's Tharp just hanging out. Jeremy Smith right there as well. Now Frank Jackson has moved all the way up into fifth. Hubbard has slipped to sixth just behind him. And got to watch out because Padani's knocking on the door of opportunity as well. That's a great fight, but I don't want to miss what happens up front because anything could happen in these closing stages. Seabolt as Carter goes off the track. Here comes Eagland. And Seabolt is Eagland's teammate. I don't expect team tactics to be in play here, though. It's not like these guys are at that stage in a championship fight either. It's really about a race win here. And Carter's still quadding up out of there, man. It's getting hairy, though, I'll tell you. Goes triple quad, and Seabolt is not moving just yet. Rider down. That was Adam Holm, I believe. <coughs> All right, Seabolt moves aside, and Carter rips the crap out of that rut to move on through. 1.7 in it between first and second still. Carter just sitting into those whoops so well. Now, Seabolt, does he move aside for his teammate Eaglin to go by? Or does he latch onto the back of Carter and try to make passes? Oh, Carter down from the lead! Front end tuck over the rut. And there goes Eaglin. Here comes Tharp to take over second. What is happening in Foxborough? Is it a full moon over Foxborough? It can't be. We just had the eclipse. And Carter's going to try to quad back by in a second, and he's got it on Tharp. Tharp trying to get him back. It's a slow race to the corner, but it will be Carter who retains it. Eaglin's got four seconds to the good. Woo, lap traffic getting out of the way. 27 of Alec Horn again, I think, going two laps down must be. Yeah, he's just going to tuck to the inside and let these guys go and continue the fight. Don't tell me, is that Eaglin out of the lead? Are you serious? Before the whoops even. What a weird spot to crash, and Carter's back out front, but Tharp is right on him. Has Braden Tharp ever won a 450 main? I don't know if he has. He's knocking on the door of opportunity as Carter's gone to a completely different rhythm option here. Ooh, lap traffic. That's Blake O'Brien, and Carter hits him and goes down. What is happening? Braden Tharp goes to the lead with less than a minute and a lap to go. Oh my goodness, Braden Tharp, Covenant number 23 is leading this main. How many different lead changes have we had? Oh my goodness. I think time is going to expire this time by as Tharp almost got a little wayward in the whoops. It's Eaglin who's now second ahead of Carter as Carter goes down out of third. 
Is that Johnny Padani and Frank Jackson going by? Hubbard just went down. Jeremy Smith is on top of him. Where did Alexis LeClaire come from? Suddenly he's in the mix. As Tharp is going to come and get the white flag this time by. And he's crawling up here, man. He's doubling. He's tripling. White flag in the air in Foxborough for Braden Tharp. Four seconds ahead of Colby Eagland. I don't know if Tharp has won a 450 main event before. I don't think he has. Here we go. Into the whoops. Triples out clean. Gets on top of the whoops. He's a little sideways and he rallies it together. Not going to quad. Eaglin's pushing. Wow, Tharp's never even won a main. 250 or 450. What an upset story this would be for the 23. Does he get through the last two rhythms clean? He goes over. He goes three. He goes two. He's got a big enough gap on Eaglin not to send it here. He is going to three, though. And three again. How about this, folks? First career main event win. Brayden Tharp wins Foxborough. Holy smokes, what a win that is. Colby Eaglin second. Frank Jackson rounds out the podium. Where did that come from? Johnny Padani all the way to fourth. Carter just went down with LeClaire in the last corner. And that gives Hubbard fifth. Carter gets seventh, eighth in this main event. Jeremy Smith got him at the line. Castellaneta ninth. And Turley rounds out the top ten. Holy smokes. What just happened? I can't even wrap my head around how that main event just transpired. One of the craziest main events I've ever seen in MX Simulator. Nobody wanted to win that thing, but Tharp is the one who gets it done. And after cuts are in, it's official. Braden Tharp is your Moto Option Supercross winner in Foxborough. What a win. What a race. Eaglin second, Jackson third, Padani fourth, and Hubbard your top five. LeClaire Smith, Carter, Castellaneta, Turley is officially your top ten. It was Haley, Holt, Lang, Speck, Seabolt, Holm, O'Brien, Sullivan, Arico, Horn, Hall, and Rogers. The running order from there. Wow. Crazy race. Crazy, crazy, crazy race. And many congratulations to Braden Tharp on the win. Woo! I can't believe that one, man. I really can't. There's not many races I get to call like that, and to call that one was insane. How many lead changes does we just have? Can't even freaking believe that. I almost want to wait to see once the server restarts. If we can go to our server page and see how many different leaders we had, because that was crazy. We had a Hubbard, Smith, Carter, Eagland at 1.2, I think. Obviously, Tharp, who gets the win. So five different leaders, but how many lead changes, man? Wow. Unbeknownst to all of us, too, that actually completely breaks up the Phil's perfection tonight that was on the table, and it really looked like it was possible. All right, let's look at this server page, people. Tharp gets the win. Look at how close that was. Look at this chart. That red line right there, Hubbard led so much of that race and then just all over the place. And uh, this is so Tharp was up here, drops all the way down to here, crashes here, I think, and then makes a bunch of time up when Hubbard goes down. And then just little passes into the lead. Leads the last two laps. Unbelievable. So we had Hubbard, 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 Carter. Hubbard, 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 Hubbard. So until lap 15, we only had one different leader. Then we had Smith, Hubbard, Eagland, Carter, Carter, Eagland, Tharp, Tharp, Tharp. <laughs> the last three laps. Unbelievable. That race is crazy. Just look at lap 16 and lap 24. Those final eight laps. One, so we had one... Two, three, four, five, six lead changes in the final eight laps of that race. Crazy. Oh, what a race. 
<laughs> so Sully runs the best lap of the race at a 50.4. He comes in here, tells us that you got stuck in the bales. I think we maybe saw that, but uh, there was another part of it. Consistency winner is Tharp. Spencer Turley, look at the consistency out of Turley there. And uh, yeah, this is where it's won and lost for Carter and Hubbard right there. The consistency element not there for the teammates. Individual worst laps, that also helps. Tharp never went above a minute. Yeah, crazy. Yeah, so Leclerc, uh, hard charger award. Does it say awards award winners down here? But Leclerc did go from, uh, what was it, 21st to 6th? Yeah, that's uh, that's crazy. Leclerc, 21st. So these 7s that you see here, if I just do control 7, well, that's not going to help because there's a ton of 17s and 27s and whatever, but uh, yeah, Leclerc was lost some positions here on lap 10. Gained them back, lost one, gained a bunch back, and then got all the way to six at the end. Like, he just snuck in out of nowhere. Sheesh! What a race, man. Unbelievable. Fun one to call. I'll give him credit for that, because that race was nutty. So that is going to do it for round 13 of Moto Options Supercross. I hope you guys enjoyed that one. One of the best races of the year. Honestly, I feel like I should just clip that last... I don't even know, 10 minutes of the race pretty much, but really the last five minutes or so, unbelievable. Uh, I can't get over how good of a race that was. A lot of fun. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Like I said, um, yeah, big shout out to the Race Factor Gaming track crew, racefactorgaming.com, always putting on a professional event and making it fun for us to watch. Good racetrack is what I felt like tonight, provided the goods. And uh, shout out to the Design Lab Co. for our whole shot awards. Jacob Hubbard picking up, I think, uh, Imoto said his ninth hole shot this year, including Triple Crown races. So, um, yeah, that was uh, that was crazy. That was crazy. So, we had two brand new winners this year. I think that was McIntosh's second career win, but Brayden Tharp had never won a race, apparently. Wins the 450 main event tonight. Unbelievable, man. Good stuff. Foxborough delivered. And we hope we get more of it next week because we're going right into a 250 East-West showdown at Nashville. That's going to be crazy. So much fun to see who's going to break the record with um, Eagle, or not Eagle, excuse me, uh, Balzer and Shirley. They're going to finally face off against each other next week in Nashville. That'll be fun. And then, hey, maybe we'll see another crazy 450 main event like that as well. Um, yeah. Unbelievable. All right. That's going to do it for me, guys. I'm going to send it off here and send you guys on your way. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to Round 13 of Moto Option Supercross live here on Start Your Systems TV. For Kellen Brower, Andrew Wood, and anybody else that's always associated with the broadcast, Evan Holt, big help as he has every single week as well. Um, we thank you for tuning into this broadcast of Moto Option Supercross, and we'll see you next week in Nashville. So long for now.
Oh yeah.